Not many banks followed Barclays' practice. Banking in Kenya continued to be dominated by men until the 1990s, when calls for affirmative action began to affect employment practices across a wide spectrum of sectors of the country's economy. Today, women are employed in the banking industry as much as men, if not more. Some notable women who have risen to high positions in banking in recent times include Nasim Devji, the chief executive officer of the Diamond Trust Bank Group, who is also the first woman appointed CEO of a bank in Kenya. Anne Mutahi, chairperson of Standard Chartered Bank Kenya. Nyambura Koigi, the managing director of Postbank. Vindia Vital Ramesh, CEO of Bank of Baroda, Kenya. Jacinta Mwatela, a former deputy governor of the Central Bank. Rose Detho, Director of Central Bank's Deposit Protection Fund, and Sheila Mbijiwe, a former director at Stanchart and currently a member of the Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee. And gender sensitivity has not been confined to only employment policies. It has also affected services in a number of banks. In Baroda, we have encouraged a totally all women's branch in Nayali. Yeah. My head of credit is a lady mm -hmm. and uh, all my branches are headed by for trade finance and forex is headed by a woman mm -hmm. and most of the branches, the credit and important portfolio is held by a manager who is a lady. Other banks that offer accounts designed for women include Chase Bank, Fina Bank, INM and Standard Chartered. On the whole, however, bank employment policies in general have affected the development of banking in the country. Relations between banks and their staff have been fairly cordial. This has been mainly due to the operations of the Kenya Bankers Association, which was set up by eight banks, namely Bank of Baroda, Bank of India, Barclays DCO, General Bank of the Netherlands, Habib Bank of National Bank of India, Ottoman Bank, and Standard Chartered Bank. The association was actually set up in 1962, mm -hmm. and then it was called the Kenya Bankers Employers Association. Mm -hmm. And as the name implied, it was um, uh, because the industry was growing, and the employers, as bankers as employers, felt that there was a need to bring the employers together and handle, at that point in time, the industrial relations that they needed to handled collectively. And so initially the association mainly handled the collective bargaining agreement mm -hmm. with negotiating the CBA with the, with the unions mm -hmm. on behalf of the employer, mm -hmm. which then was collectively doing it together under the umbrella of the Kenya Bankers Employers Association. Mm -hmm. The biggest confrontation between banks and their staff came on August 3rd, 1998, when employees of all banks in Kenya started an industry-wide strike that severely crippled banking operations in the country. And the employees' grievances were not directed at anything the banks had done. The workers were protesting government plans to tax their low-interest loans as a benefit. They were also up in arms over the government's introduction of a fringe benefit tax. The strike persisted for five days, despite government threats that it was illegal. It was only disrupted by the bomb blast at the American embassy in Nairobi on August 7th that year, which killed more than 280 people and injured even more. The staff returned to work so as not to worsen the public sentiment following the deadly terror attack. Since then, relations between the banking industry and its staff have been cordial. One of our key roles as, a, as an entity, we have mentioned the industrial relations which has been there and uh, we still continue doing, but our role has sort of like expanded and we see ourselves moving more into the advocacy uh, arena where we try to proactively influence policy uh, formulation uh, process. And so we engage the stakeholders in the policy formulation um, arena. Mm -hmm. And that's where our engagement with the parliamentarians, for example, comes in. Our engagement with the Treasury, um, because we submit, for example, to the Treasury proposals of um, policy proposals that we intend to see in the budget. 
as the budget is being formulated. Mm -hmm. And that we do um, every year. And some of the proposals that we do make forth and defend at the budget committee level mm -hmm. eventually end up in the in the budget proposal. Not all, but a number of them would end up in the budget proposal um, document. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in terms of engaging the other parliamentarians, for example, you, you may recall um, uh, for the last almost one and a half years, there was the debate about legislating the interest rates. And there were arguments for and against. And uh, we thought that it was a responsibility as an industry to enlighten or give our views to the parliamentarians who are in the process of trying to propose a legislation that we thought will have significant effects on the whole operation of the banking industry. So we had to give our side of, um, of, 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 of the story and we engaged them quite, uh, quite, 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 quite um, uh, aggressively because we had several meetings with parliamentarians, different parliamentary committees. Uh, we were summoned to various uh, sessions of uh, the parliamentary committee briefings and uh, eventually I think our view was, was had. Much of what has happened in the commercial banking sector has been mirrored by the operations of non-bank financial institutions that provide specialized financial services such as mortgage, higher purchase financing, secured installment loans and trade credit. They constitute a crucial segment of financial intermediaries beside commercial banks. Diamond Trust Kenya Limited was the first non-bank financial institution to be established in Kenya. It was established in 1946 as Diamond Jubilee Investments, initially covering the entire East Africa region. Savings and loans followed in 1949, focusing mainly on mortgage finance. An important role in Kenya's financial sector is now played by a special type of non-bank financial institution, the Savings and Credit Cooperative Societies, or SACOs. They provide millions of Kenyans with essential financial services that they normally cannot access through banks, especially easier access to credit, albeit sometimes at higher interest rates. They span nearly all the sectors of the economy, Indeed, they have been credited with spurring Kenya's ongoing real estate boom. That was the history of banking in Kenya. But what of the future? What challenges and opportunities do Kenyan banks face in the next decade or two? Going forward and uh, casting our eyes uh, to the next uh, 10 to 20 years, Banks are confronted by enormous challenges. The first one uh, is technology innovations. Technology is bringing uh, previously uh, unimagined competition into the banking space. The second challenge that uh, banks have to contend with uh, is consumer uh, protection and consumer agitation. In the past, banks have dealt by and large uh, with consumers who are not, uh, who were not very exposed. Uh, this was their first uh, relationship in financial service and banks uh, uh, were more privileged to be more knowledgeable than the customer. But suddenly the customer have changed. The customer is now educated, they know their rights, uh, they are demanding. The third challenge that uh, undoubtedly who pose a huge challenge to the bank is uh, what you could call uh, democratic, uh, de uh, demographic changes. Banks were used to, on average, uh, to have a customer who was on uh, 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 above 40 years, 50 years, with uh, a demography that shows the average age uh, of uh, the population will be 25. Uh, but I don't know, banks will have to do a lot to adjust to these unique um, uh, generation Y and uh, Generation X uh, type of uh, customer with very different demands. The main challenges are, I'll look at them as twofold. One is uh, there's a huge proportion of Kenyans out there who either are unbanked completely or they are underbanked. So from the statistics available, 
we are just about, I think in 2009, this, the, the data was at just about 30% of Kenyans were banked. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge proportion of Kenyans out there who don't have access to banks or are uh, in, uh, inadequately accessed. Yeah. So they don't have all what they require from the banking system. And our challenge, I think, as an industry will be to access our services to those uh, Kenyans who do not have access. The other challenge is the cost of uh, those services. Um, th there has been, um, an, uh, I would say there has been more or less like an outcry of the fact that the cost of the banking services, and maybe not just banking services, but I'll say financial services, is too high for the consumer. And so we have got that twin challenge, access our services to the person who is not currently being accessed and bring the cost of those services down. In 2012, the Kenya Bankers Association celebrated its 50th anniversary, barely a year before the nation's own Golden Jubilee celebration of independence. The occasion brought together leading personalities in the banking industry, both past and present, as well as a number of key officials, including the president of the African Development Bank, Donald Kaberuka, and the minister for finance, Njeru Githai. Addressing guests at the gathering, Habil Olaka, chief executive officer of the association, paid glowing tribute to Kenyan bankers and their staff for their important role in shaping Kenya's history throughout the nation's first 50 years of independence. Ladies and gentlemen, when I look at KBA's beginnings, during a time when our country was yet to gain self-rule, to today, I'm humbled and thankful for all the support and partnership that we have received from all our various stakeholders. We are invigorated by our new tagline, One Industry Transforming Kenya, which illustrates our commitment to our country. Through the strength and commitment of our members, I wish to reassure the Kenyan public and all our industry stakeholders that Kenya's banking sector doors are open. We will listen and we will work together to build our economy.